Marian was a young beautiful lady from a small village in Nigeria. Life had not been easy for her. Her family was poor and after her father passed away, things only got worse. Her mother did everything she could to care for Miriam and her two younger brothers, Kunle and Tunde. The little money they made from farming barely covered their needs. And most nights, they went to bed hungry. Miriam often sat outside their small mud house in the evenings, looking up at the stars and dreaming of a better life. She wanted to help her family escape poverty. But how? Opportunities were scarce in their village, and she knew that without money, her dreams would remain unfulfilled. One evening, as Maria sat lost in her thoughts, she saw a woman approaching. She was unlike anyone Maria had seen in the village. The woman wore a bright red dress, high heels that clicked against the ground and gold jewelries that shone even in the fading sunlight. Her face was painted with makeup, and her perfume filled the air. Hello, my dear, the woman greeted her with a warm smile. You must be Marian. Surprised that this stranger knew her name, Marian nodded cautiously. Yes, I am. My name is Madame Kemi. The woman introduced herself, extending her hand. I am from Lagos. At the mention of Lagos, Marian's eyes widened with curiosity. She had heard story about Lagos, a city where people went to make money, where dreams came true. To her, Lagos was a land of wealth and sources, so different from her poor village. Madame Kemi noticed Marian's interest and smiled. I work with young ladies like you, helping them find opportunities. In the city, life in Lagos is good, she said, her voice dripping with promise. You could make money, live in a big house, wear beautiful clothes. All your dreams could come true. Maria heart raised with excitement. She could not help but imagine herself living a comfortable life, sending money back home to her family, lifting them out of poverty. She thought of her mother, who worked tirelessly to feed them, and her brothers, who deserve a chance at a better future. This could be the opportunity she had been waiting for. But how can I trust you? Maria asked, trying to hide her excitement, though she wanted to believe Madame Kemi's word. A small voice in her head warned her to be careful. Madame Kemi laughed softly. I understand your worries, Miriam. Many girls from this village, like yours, have come with me and now live happily in Lagos. They have jobs. They send money home. Their families are doing well because of them. You can ask around the village about me. People know who I am. Miriam thought about Madame Kemi's words. He had indeed hear about young girls leaving the village with city people and come back with money. She remembered her childhood friend, Zinam, who left with a woman similar to Madame Kemi a few years ago. She had not heard from her since. But maybe Zinam was one of those girls who made it big in Lagos. Seeing the doubt fading from Miriam's face, Madame Kemi continued, Think about your family, Miriam. Don't you want to give them a better life? Miriam's eyes filled with tears as she thought of her mother and brothers. She wanted more than anything to see her family happy. Yes, she whispered, more to herself than to Madame Kemi. I want a better life for them. Madame Kemi reached out and patted her shoulder gently. You have a good heart, Miriam. That is why you deserve this opportunity. If you come with me, I promise you will never regret it. The word promise lingered in the air, sinking deep into Miriam's heart. It sounds like a promise of freedom, of happiness, of everything she had ever dreamt of. She imagined herself 
coming back to the village one day, dressing in beautiful clothes like Madame Kemi, with gifts for her family, a smile on her face, and pride in her heart. I think I want to go, Marian said finally, her voice trembling with mist of fear and excitement. Good girl, Madame Kemi replied, a pleased smile crossing her face. We will leave tomorrow at dawn. Pack a few clothes. You will not need much in Lagos. We will take care of everything. Maria went to bed that night, her mind boozing with excitement. She could not sleep, thinking of all the things she would do for her family once she reached Lagos. Hear her brother's laughter as they enjoyed the gift she would send. But in the back of her mind, a small doubt lingered. She pushed it aside, reminding herself that Madame Kemi had promised a better life. Maria went to her mother that night and told her about Madame Kemi's offer. Her mother was hesitant, warning her about the dangers of leaving home for a big city without knowing anyone. But Maria was determined. She saw this as her only chance to change their lives for the better. The next morning, just as the sun began to rise, Marian said goodbye to her mother and brothers. She hugged them tightly, promising to return soon with money and gifts for everyone. Her mother was worried, but she could not refuse her daughter's dream. She watched as Marian climbed into Madame's chemi car, waving onto the vehicle, disappeared down the dusty road. As the car sped towards Lagos, Marian's heart panting with excitement but also with a strange sense of unease. She reminded herself of Madame Skemi's promise. A smile, her kind words. But as the city skyline came into view, Marian could not shake the feeling that her life was about to change in ways she had never imagined. As they drove towards Lagos, Madame Kemi turned to Miriam, her eyes sharp yet comforting. You are beautiful, Miriam, she said. With your look, you could work in one of the big hotels in Lagos. Serving important guests, people come from all over the world and they pay good money. You could make enough to support your family. Miriam had raised with excitement. Really? I can work in Lagos? She asked, her eyes wide with hope. Madame Kemi nodded. Her red lips cutting into a warm smile. Yes, of course. I can help you get started. When they arrived in Lagos, Maria was overwhelmed. The buildings were all tall and shining, stretching towards the sky like giants. The street bustled with people and there was a constant hum of activity. This was a world unlike anything she had ever seen. Lagos was more beautiful, more active than she had ever imagined. Madame Kemi led Miriam to a small apartment in a crowded neighborhood. The room was crammed with just a bed, a small table, and a window that looked out onto the busy street below. You will stay here for now, Madame Kemi said, setting Miriam's bag down. Rest tonight. And tomorrow, I will introduce you to some people who can help you start working. Miriam felt a surge of gratitude. Thank you, Madame Kemi. I will not disappoint you. That night, as she lay on the team mattress, Miriam's emotions were missed. Excitement filled her at the thought of her new life. But a nervous flutter in her stomach reminded her of her mother's warning. Still, she reminded herself of Madame Kemi's promise. This was the beginning of something better. She would make her family proud, and all the suffering they have endured would be worth it. The next morning, Madame Kemi arrived at Miriam's apartment. Her face glowing with excitement, she sat down beside Miriam, who was already eager to know what kind of job she would start. Miriam, Madame Kemi began, 
Her voice warm and reassuring. I have been thinking, being a cleaner here in Lagos would not earn you much. I know you want to support your family. And with the little they will pay you here, it will take years to make a real difference. She leaned in, lowering her voice. What if I told you there is an opportunity to make 10 times what you will earn here? Maria's eyes widened with hope. Really, Madam Kemi, is that possible? Yes, my dear. I have friends in other countries where the pay is much better. They need young, hard-working ladies just like you. You will live comfortably and soon enough you will have enough money to send back home and change your family life. Marian could not contain her excitement. The thoughts of leaving Nigeria, going to a foreign land and earning a fortune was beyond her widest dreams. She smiled eagerly, her eyes shining with hope. I will do it, Madam Kemi. I will do any job you ask me to do, as long as it pays well. Madam Kemi nodded approvingly. Good girl, I knew you would be brave. Trust me, this is a chance you will never regret. But unknown to Maria, Madam Kemi had dark plans. She was not just taking her out of Nigeria for a better job. She was part of a trafficking network that Leon young women from villages, promising them opportunities abroad, only to trap them in a life they could never have imagined. Over the next few days, Madame Kemi introduced Miriam to a few other girls she was planning to take along. They were around Miriam's age, and each of them shared a similar stories of hardship, poverty, and a desperate desire to help their families. There was Amina, a shy girl from the north who wanted to save enough money to pay her brother's school fees. Inkechi from the east dreamt of starting a business to support her early mother. The girls quickly became friends, sharing their dreams and hope for a brighter future. I heard the people abroad are very nice, Amina whispered to Miriam one evening. Her eyes filled with wonders. They pay well and they respect workers like us. I cannot wait to see it all. Inkechi added, I am so glad we are all going together. We will be like sisters, supporting each other in this new life. Miriam nodded, feeling a warm sense of sisterhood. With these girls who like her, only wanted a chance to make life better. Madam Kemi often visit them, filling their head with stories of the beautiful cities they would see, the luxurious life they would lead, and the money they would soon be sending home. Finally, the day came. Madam Kemi gathered the girls early in the morning and led them to a small office in a busy part of Lagos. There she handed them some papers, instructing them to sign quickly without reading. These are just some formalities, Madam Kemi said, flashing her usual reassuring smile. I have taken care of everything for you girls. Just sign here and your new life would begin. Without a second thought, the girls signed. Each one filled with mixture of excitement and nerves. They did not question Madam Kemi, not even Miriam. After all, this was the woman who had promised them a future, a future that was just within their reach. That night, they were taken to a cramped house in an unknown part of town with the promise that they would leave for their new destination in the morning. As they lay on the tin mats, Marian tried to push away the tiny voice of doubt that was beginning to creep into her thoughts. She remembered her mother's word trust no one, but she quickly dismissed her worries, convincing herself that this was just the fear of unknown, that she would be safe as long as she followed Madame Kemi's instructions. After all, this was the path to a better life. 
The next morning they were woken up before dawn and taken to a small bus. Where they sat shoulder to shoulder. Madame Kemi joined them, looking pleased with how smoothly everything was going. As the bus pulled away, Marian looked outside the window, watching Lagos disappear into the early morning hours. She whispered a silent prayer, promising herself that she would work hard, send money back to her family, and one day return to them as a success. Yet, as they traveled further, passing through unfamiliar towns and remote roads, Marian could not shake the feeling of unease that was settled in her stomach. Few months later, Marian found herself in an entirely different land. Far from everything she knew, Madame Kemi had smuggled her and the other girls across the border, assuring them that their lives were about to change. However, Marian soon realized that they were not heading to the glamorous new life she had been promised. She was taken to a dark crowded compound where a woman named Madame CJ awaited. Madame CJ's face was cold, her expression steamed, and she radiated a chilling aura that made Marian's heart pant with fear. The moment they arrived, Madame Kemi handed them over to her without even saying goodbye. Madame Kemi, where is she? Marian asked, looking around with panic. She had trusted Madame Kemi to guide her through this journey. How could she just vanish? Madame CJ sneered. Forget about Madame Kemi. She has done her part and has been paid. From now on, I am the one you will answer to. Her voice was icy and her eyes narrowed as she scanned Marian from her to toes. Madame CJ led her through a long way and into a large room filled with dozens of young girls, all dressed in revealing clothes. The girls move around silently, some with blank expressions, others with hollow eyes that look like they have given up long ago. Marian's confusion deepened and dread settled into her stomach as she looked around. Who are these girls? Marian asked, her voice trembling. What are they doing here? Madame CJ's face twisted with irritation. Shut up, she snapped. This is your new home now. You will be doing the same work they are doing. You will sleep with different men, make them happy, and bring me my money. Marian's eyes widened, disbelief written across her face. No, I cannot. This is not what I was told. Her voice break, her words fill with panic. Madame CJ's expressions hardened. You owe me 20 million naira. She said coldly, that is the cost of bringing you here. And until you pay every last cobble, you are not going anywhere. Marian's mind reeled, and she took a step back, shaking her head. 20 million? I don't have that kind of money. I cannot do this. Please, let me go. Madam CJ laughed. A sound so chilly. You don't have a choice, my dear. You work until you are done paying your debts. Or you can rot here. It's up to you. Tears well up in Marian's eyes. As she looked in her surroundings, realizing the trap she had fallen into, the girls around her had once been like this. Hopeful, dreaming of better life, only to be crushed under the weight of a lie they could not escape. Her heart sank as the reality set in. There was no way out, no one coming to save her. Marian tried to fight back her tears, but the crushing weight of regret bore down on her. She remembered her mother's warning, the warmth of her small home, and the dreams she had foolishly allowed Madame Kemi to twist. And now in a foreign land, with no escape, she realized the price she was forced to pay for her hope and trust. Maria's heart pounded 
as she took in Madame CJ's chilling words. How? She managed to whisper, her voice barely audible. The shock was overwhelming and the sickening realization of the nightmare she had walked into washed over her. She had been deceived, taken from her home under false promises and delivered into a life of horror. Tears streamed down her face as she cried out, Please, I don't want to do this. I want to go back home. Please let me go. But Madame CJ only responded with a crest smile. In one swift move, she raised her hand and slapped Miriam across the face. The force of it left Miriam reeling. A sharp pain blooming across her cheek. She gasped, stunned, as Madame CJ coldly ordered her guards. Take her phone and her passports. She will not be needing them anymore. As the guards closed in, Marian tried to back away, but there was nowhere to run. They grabbed her belongings and stripped her of the last pieces of home she had held onto. Desperation clung at her, and she pleaded with Madame CJ, her voice shaking, Please, do not do this. I will do anything else. Just do not make me stay here. But Madame CJ's expression remained as hard as stone. Anyone who disobey me here, face the consequences. She declared, her tomb void of mercy. Turning to her guards, she issued a chilling command. Take her away, teach her a lesson. In an instant, seven guards seized Miriam, dragging her towards a dimly light room. At the end of the hall, Miriam fought, struggling against their iron grip. But her resistance was no match for their strength. She cried, pleaded, begged for mercy, but her words fell on deaf ears. They forced her into the room, her heart raising, as fear took over. Her scream echoed, but no one came to help. Her dress was torn away. Her dignity shattered as the guards ignored her desperate pleas. One by one, they violated her, each act stripping away her spirit, leaving her broken and helpless. The pain was unbearable. Marian screamed, faded into weak whimpers, as she struggled to endure the horror inflicted upon her. Her vision blonde, and her mind drifted in, and out of curiosity, her body overwhelmed by the brutality she was forced to endure. Finally, when her strength was completely spent, and her cried had become mere whispered, darkness took over. Marian's body went limp, and she passed out, a shattered soul slipping into unconsciousness as the nightmare continued around her. The promise of a better life had led her to the depth of despair, leaving her trapped in a nightmare she could not escape. And as she lay there, lifeless and broken, her dreams of hope and happiness were crushed, buried beneath a mountain of pain and betrayal. Thanks guys for watching this video. Tell us how you feel about this story. And if you want us to continue this story, let us know on the comment section. Please subscribe to this channel to support us. Like, share and drop your comment below. And do not forget to tell us the city or the country you are watching from. Thank you guys. We love you all.